So this is a table A, B, C. Then, when you have a multiple tables, how do you select the information data from multiple tables? You need to join, right? So you need to use the join operation. When you join two tables, there are different ways of the join. Okay, we do not discuss yet, we will learn. There are different ways of the join. Also, when you join, A join with B, or B join with A, it's a different, right? Output is the same, but depending on the order of the join, it's a different in terms of performance. So, if you regard the T as the table, also public transportation as the join method. This is the join. Also, this is the join order. So, we can say select something data from A, B, C, or B, A, C, C, A, B. The order might be different where Something transportation between A and B is a join condition and join condition. Something like that. If you submit the one query with three different tables, how many different ways of accessing the data? 12,000 different ways. Okay? Then you need to decide, or your DBMS will decide how many ways, one, just one way to access the data. Okay? That, who is in charge of such a selection? Query optimizer and query processor. This is a hard of the DBMS system, actually. So let's go back to the very beginning. Why do you use the DBMS system? Database. Why? To manage large data. <coughs> to manage the large data. In other words, when you have the very large data, what will be the difficulty? It will take a time to find, to, find, to access the data, right? So our goal is to speed up, find the data. If you can find the data, even though you have the very large data, but if you can find the data very fast, you don't have to use the DBMS system or the database. But mostly when you have the very big, large data, it will take a time to access this data. So we need to speed up. Then, query optimizer. There are many, many different ways, even including three tables. There are 12,000 different ways to access the data. Among 12,000, we need to take, select one of them, which is the fastest way. Okay? In this case, we can consider several different criteria, time and convenience versus some other as price, but here, when query optimizer decide the best way, fastest way is just speed. Okay? Which one is the fast one? So this is not a not an easy task to select one of them among twelve thousand different ways. What is it? So think about your the query uh, that you made in your midterm exam, some of the answer query have the four, five tables. The number of a different way is 100,000. Almost a million different ways. So this is not an easy task to select. So today we are going to learn how to decide, how to find <coughs> different ways. Before that, let's see the more example of the query process with this example. So this one, join order, visiting order. Why this one is important? Any difference between 
visiting A, B table or B and A table. Any difference? In other words, I am visiting Bridgeport first, then New York, and then Boston. Or New York, Bridgeport, then Boston. So maybe different. <coughs> we want to find the shortest path. So similarly, in here, A and B and B and A. So for example, we try like to join two tables. Student, employee, and department. Select data from where D and O equal to D number. The join condition, we access two table. When you access, for first example, why don't we access employee first? Then find department, which is the which is satisfied with the join condition. Then the second way is first access department. Then find the employee that is that satisfied with the, this condition. What can be the difference? In terms of result, no difference. However, if you consider the performance speed, it's a different. For example, you have 10 million of employees. Okay, then two departments. It's an extreme case. It's not real, but extreme case. When you have 10 million, then two departments. First, I need to access 10 million employees first, 10 million times. Then find match department. How many times? 10 million times. Or if you have the department, so two departments, one department, if you have clustering index, you can just access one, then index. That's it. Then next department, if you have clustering index, you can access so two times. Sometimes two times are enough. So this one department first, then employee. Maybe faster than employee. Not always, but sometimes. So order is also very important. That's one thing. So which, which order you are going to join. That is called the join order. The second is accessing one a single table. How many different ways can you imagine to access a single table? How can you access, how can you search the data from one table? First, how can you search the data? For example, if I give the file of the data, first, most naive way, brute force, full scan. You can check line by line, okay, word by word. Then search the data. When I search the student, I can check. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? And all students one by one. That is called linear search. Linear search. What? Full. Sometimes it's called a full table scan. So full table scan. I scan all students to find the a specific student. That's one way. That's naive way, right? So that's one way. Another way is, as you suggest, index. Before index, what if you do not have index? If the file is ordered, you can use binary search. So another way is binary search. What else? If you have an index, you can use index search. Even in index, you can use primary index. 
Mm. It's a one by one primary index. Sometimes you have cluster index. Okay? So there are different ways of accessing the data, even a single table. Okay? Usually it's a seven or eight different. It depends on the DBMS. We will see details. So we check the join order, and this one, ah, another one is transportation. This one is join <coughs> operation. When you join two tables, I just mentioned we can combine, we can join, but I didn't explain how to join, okay? So when you combine, when you access two tables, how can you, if I ask you, why don't you implement the join? How can you implement? First way is we have employee. We have department. So you can check the first employee. Then find the department that is satisfied with doing condition. That is D, N O is D number. Then next, the second employee. Then find the department that satisfied mm -hmm. with this, right? The next, next, next. This is called nested. It's a looping, right? For each data, it has a loop. So it's called a nested loop join. It's a, sometimes it's called an NL join or nested loop join. Nested loop join is one of the popular. Okay? Is there any other way to join two tables? This one is good for when you have index for this one. What if you do not have an index? Merge, merge, merge. Merge? Two tables. Two tables. You can just merge. Instead of a merge, before you merge, why don't you sort each table? So sort by the D and O. Then sort by D number. Then from the beginning, match whether this is the satisfied with this and next 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 first sort then merge before you merge why don't you sort because we are going to use the joint condition right so that makes sense this is called sort merge joint especially when you do not have index this one is good for another way to join the table is hash. So you can apply the hash function for each. Then you will get the hash key value. You will get the hash key value from another table. Then put, so this is a hash bucket for 0, 1, 2, 3. Put this one, put this one, put this one, this one. Then in the bracket, same bracket, you can find the tuple that satisfies with the this. It's a hash join. There are more ways to join. Even simply we have the three join operation. So three join operation, a different way of accessing the data, and factorial number of the join order. So this is a huge number. So we need to find that. How? How can we decide? How optimizer decide the fastest way? How can you? There are two ways. In cover, go back to the travel plan. So how can you decide? In my case, when I decide a plan, so let's decide. The most important criteria is the budget, the money. 
So I will consider only the money, 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 money. Then you can select one of them. So you will calculate the total amount of money for each case, right? Yes, I can program <laughs> because uh, I'm, I know how to code, such a simple. Then you sort blank, then select the first one. This is one one. So it's exactly the same in the database. You can compute the cost. Then which one is better? Low cost, high cost? Low cost. So you need to you can select low cost the access path. For example, table A, table B, table C, we will use the bus and the airplane, then for each, we can work, work, work. That is the lowest expense. So same thing. We will consider lowest cost in database among 12,000. So this is called cost-based optimizer. Cost-based optimizer. What is called the CBO. Have you ever heard about the CBO or the cost-based optimizer? If you are doing the database program, definitely you should know cost-based optimizer. Who is in charge of the, such a cost-based optimizer? You or programmer? No, DBMS. Query, where is that? Query optimizer is in charge of such a calculation. You don't have to worry about No, you should do You'd better know how optimizer Calculate such a cost, we will learn, probably next class. Another way is called rule-based optimizer. For example, if there exists both, okay? For example, if there exists both between two cities, I will select the bus always. That is my rule. Okay, whenever I make the plan. So, first rule is rule one, boss. Rule two, if there exists, if there is no boss, then I will take a walk. Well, there's a second rule. Also, if we, if I am visiting multiple city, so I'm going to visit the nearest one, then far. That is my third rule. So you have the certain rules, okay, without calculating the cost. Instead of the cost, you will have the rule, then follow the rule. So then eventually you will decide New York, Bridgeport, Boston. Then work, 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 then bus, bus. That is my plan. That is the way of deciding the query plan, how to access the data. That is called the rule-based optimizer. The Chinese is better. So this is called RBO. This is called the CBO, rule-based optimizer, cost-based optimizer. Which one is better? It depends. <laughs> depends on what? Usually, cost-based optimizer is better in terms of performance. So you can find, because you calculate all the cost of 12,000 cases cost, this, this need 10, 100 bucks, 101, 102, and 10,000 bucks. So I will take the, this one, okay? So it's the best. But if you, you are using the rule base, you don't know whether this is the best one, whether this is the cheapest one. But my rule is bus, if there exists. But sometimes bus is expensive than other, right? Also, it will take more and longer time. Who, it cannot be guaranteed. But because the rule is this, I'm, I'm going to follow. So that is rule based. But however, which one is faster to decide? Rule base is much faster. You need to calculate all 12,000 
cost. That's the last one. It will take a time. But if you have the just rule, apply the rule. That's it. So it depends. But most of the DBMS use host based optimizer. Okay? So we are going to learn how to calculate such a cost. Then my question is how to calculate the cost? in computer, especially when you access the data. Which one is the most critical cost? Time. time. How do you define the time? There are different times in computer if you are taking the operating system. CPU time or work clock time, okay? user time, system time, idle time, are you taking the operating system? You probably learn, right? So time sometimes depends on. We are not sure whether time can be determine everything. It's resource, not just time. Yeah, resource. Then what? Which resource? Like storage memory. We are accessing the data. Okay. In other words, we need to find the block, then read the data. So when you define the cost, it's not the time instead, it's the IO, input and IO. Actually, input and IO are 99% of the research used when you access the data. Okay, if you can reduce the number of IO, you can speed up the query. So we are going to consider cost as number of IO. In other words, we try to find the case which require least number of IO, input and output. That is our goal. So this is the what DBMS optimizer is doing. I believe most of the people who are developing the database program, they do not know what optimizer is doing. So this is what optimizer, especially in the DBMS, optimizer is doing when they decide. In other words, if you can understand such a mechanism, when you are coding, when you make the SQL, you can easily find, you can guide, even computer. DBMS system has the optimizer so very nice, is it perfect? No. Usually, it works 70 or 80 percent. But the other 20 percent are not accurate. So, instead, as you know, there are a bunch, bunch of different ways of the sequence to access the same data. Just like the midterm exam, when I ask the certain query, literally the uh, average GPA, whatever, each student has a different SQL, right? However, if you know such a mechanism, then you can make the best, you can even guide the optimizer to retrieve the data this way and this way. So that is the purpose of the, this chapter. So, let's slide show how the query is processed when you submit a specific query. So, for example, first,
What is this? This is a computer, okay? <laughs> so our main thing in this class, not even the in this class, but also any computer science subject are dealing with this rectangle. It's a computer. Computer should have operating system to utilize a research. Is there any computer without any program? Any device, any computer has the program. Name up variants like the firmware. What is a firmware? It's a software, but it's embedded in the device. Even this control, any device, any machine should have the, such a program. Especially in the server or computer, it has the operating system. In the operating system, what is the purpose of the operating system? We can utilize the computer resource. So, especially for the data management, we should have DBMS software. Okay? So, this DBMS has the database internal, not internal schema, and also it has physical database. Okay? So, we have a small rectangle. This is another computer. So sometimes a personal computer. So this is called client. This is called server. So combining this is client, server, environment. Or it's called sometimes three-tier architecture. It's a two-tier actually. Two-tier two architecture. There, if there is another one, like a web server or oh, application sorry. server, it will be during tier architecture. So, we'd like to connect the DBMS directly using the client server environment. This is the program running on the client side. It doesn't have to be server. Instead, it takes out some part of the server that is a client module, just like the program that you are implementing in your project B, second project. Second project, you are not implementing server side, it's just client side. So for example, it's a C Corp, then submit the same query as the this one. And what happened? What happened when you submit the C Corp using the C Corp Plus? This query, C Corp, select from where should be processing. Processing means we don't know whether this SQL is correct or not. Okay? As soon as this one is submitted, first we need to check grammar, syntax. In other words, lexical analysis. What is a lexical analysis? If you are taking the computer architecture work, especially Compile, okay? Select the column name from table name. Who are familiar with such a language? Computer? No, it's for human being. So you are familiar with this one. However, computer does not know. Actually, computer know only Machine language, assembly language, very simple. Like the add, or subtract, or the move. So this should be checked, okay? Whether this is called S-E-L-E-C-T should be reserved word the first time when you submit the select, the statement. So this is called lexical analysis. Then check whether you have the permission to the table, you need to access the user underbar tables, so whether there is the employee and department, whether you have the permission to access or access the specific column. You need to check that process is called parsing. It takes a long time sometimes, okay, to check the everything. So sometimes it's such a parsed code is called P code. P code is kind of process the statement. This statement is also placed in the somewhere in the memory in your DBMS. Why? 
you have another PC client. Then connect and submit the same query. DBMS doesn't have to process again. Instead, find the P code. Then return the data. Does it make sense? This is another way of the speed of the your query. Somebody may be curious. How can we guarantee? How often can we have the same query? Many, many times, actually. Why? Most of the client module will be program. So you can just click. Not many application program accept the query select from where. Instead, just click the button. Then that trigger the SQL, which is already programmed. So most of them are the same database query. So it should be reused. Then after query is parsed, query optimizer will be involved for what? To find the best way to access the data. That is the thing that what query optimizer is doing. Okay? So Uh, by the way, uh, we are going. I little. I changed a little bit the schedule, our course schedule. So we will have the, uh, one day the exercise lab for the query optimizer, and also I'm going to cancel the advanced topic in the database. Instead, I'd like to finish uh, the more topics in the advanced database. Okay. So this week will be the query processing and query optimizer. Next week will be the transaction management. Okay? So why don't you check the class website for the uh, revised class schedule. So this is a diagram that shows the how your query, submitted query is processed. First is a high level language, that is the SQL, then that will be scanning, parsing, and validating. That's what I explained. First, check the syntax using the lexical analysis, then parsing, just changing the code into the uh, low-level code, then validating means the, whether I have the permission of the data or not. Then, query optimizer will be involved. Before a uh, query my optimizer uh, involved, your query will be divided into the query block. For example, this. This is a query. It's a nested query, query inside the query. So, for example, this is a retrieve the a name of an employee whose salary is bigger than the maximum salary of the department number five, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody can understand this simple query. However, as you can see, how many select from where queries are involved? How many of them? Mm -hmm. It's a two. One is select maximum salary of the department number five. The next query is a name of employee whose salary is bigger than output of this. Actually, there are two queries. So, query optimizer cannot process at the same time the query. If you submit the query, like the query inside the query, it will be divided in by the select from where. So, this one is called query block. This one is another one. Is Query block. Actually, this is based on relational algebra. So that's the reason we have learned about the relational algebra. So using that relational algebra, so it will be we can have the two query block. Then query optimizer try to find the way of accessing this one, and then way of accessing this one. Then eventually it will be combined. So that is called the query. That is. Or what the query optimizer is doing. Then finally, 
I decide the one of 12,000 different ways, one of the best ways to access the data. How can we represent, how can the query optimizer represent, describe such a best way? Using execution plan. It shows the plan to visit the data. For example, let me show you the uh, example to access the data. Probably somewhere later of the, this chapter. Oh, for example, this. So we can access the project first, then join department, then employ, then final is the output. This is the one example of the execution plan. It shows the plan to visit, like the itinerary of your trip. Okay? First go to the JFK to take the flight to the Boston, then go to the Boston, you will take the bus uh, for transportation, then this have the side thing, then go to the bridge board. So just like that. Output of query optimizer is the execution plan. Okay? Then, if finally, the DBMS system will access the data and return data will be, output of the data will be returned to the user who submitted this query. This is the overall thing, what we are doing. Okay. Then, first, um, the selection method. So, there are three major components. One is selection, another one is a join, and third one is a join order. So first we are going to learn uh, different ways of select the data. Okay? So these are the example of the selection. So we can select the data using primary key. Okay? So one data will be returned. This time, which one will be the best way? Using primary key index. Right? That will be the best way, fastest way. What about the, this one? This is department whose department number is bigger than five. Okay? So at this time, we can access the department using what? We can use clustering index. Or sometimes, Full table scan is faster. We don't know, depending on the data. Okay? Why? Let's say we have one million, one million of the department. Okay? You need to check if you are using the index of the department number. First, check the index. Then, department table. Then next, check the index. Then, department six check the index 7, then access department 7, 8, 9, 10. You need to access index, you need to access the table. It's a double. Instead, most of the data actually will be 6 to 1 million of the department. So why don't we access all table, all data without index? That will be faster. So we cannot say index is always faster. We don't know. But this is one way. So range query. This is called the range query. And also, DNO is equal to 5. This is not the primary key. This is the clustering index, not secondary key. Secondary key is kind of the UB ID, employee ID. Okay, it's another key, but not selected as primary key. This is a conjunctive. It's a combination of the many operations. At that time, you will Select one of them, fastest way. And also this is, this is also conjunctive. So, first way is to access the data. In other words, how to access, how to travel each city. You can take the bus, you can take the work, you can take the, uh, the remo. Just like the first way of accessing the data is linear search. Okay, this is a brute force way. Sometimes it's called a full table scan without using any other data structure, without using index structure. It's a full table scan, brute force way. The second is a binary search. When can you use the binary search? 
It's data file is ordered, sorted, or right? Do you need the index? At that time, you don't need the index, right? Because data is already sorted, final search. What about the primary index or hash key index? When you have the primary key index, also data is not sorted. At the time, you can use primary index or hash key index. Sometimes you can use the index for range query, multiple data. Okay, it's a different. The next one is using cursory index, like the department number. One index key has many data. Department number one has many. Two is many. So using cursory. If you have the secondary key like the B plus three index, so you can use it. But Depending on the DBMS, sometimes you cannot see other examples. For example, Oracle, Oracle uses a B3 index, both secondary index and primary index. Oracle does not use the binary search. They ignore it. Which means data will not be never ever sorted in the table. Okay? The only exception is there is an index table, actually, if we are using Oracle. So which means it's a table, but sorted by indexing structure. That's the only one. So binary is a general example, general way of method to access the data. And conjunctive selection is the combination <laughs> of the operation. Okay. So for example, uh, retrieve the name of an employee whose salary is bigger than 5,000, and whose department is in the file, and so on. At that time, you don't have to use all the condition. Instead, the lowest cost operation can be used. You can segment by the operation. Sometimes conjunctive selection using a composite index or other index, you can use that. Okay. So, even nine different approach to access the single data. Okay. Next, join. Join operation. So these are the example. Department, employee, join with the department, DNO, SD number. Department, join with the employee, manage the social security number and social security number. So in case of join, first one is the nested loop join. Nested loop join is the First one table for each record of the table we will find the record in other table. Sometimes it's called the left hand side is the inner table, it's the inside. And right hand side is the outer table. It's a, another name of the inner table is driving table. It drives the next one. So outer table is called driving table, a driven table. Driving and driven table. So it's a nasty loop joint. The next one is a single loop joint. What is the difference between the nasty loop joint and single loop joint? How many loops of the nasty loop? It's an n square. For each data, everything. While on the other hand, single loop joint is in case you have. The index for the driven table, our table, you don't have to look for all the things. Instead, find the directory, the data. That is single loop join. So single loop join is the special case of nested loop join. Nested loop join is a full loop, two times of the full loop. Okay? Why? The single loop join is utilize the index. So it's just a one time of loop of left hand side. That is a single loop joint. Sort module is based on first we in case we do not have the index or anything, first the sort, then merge from the beginning. That is a sort merge. Hash join. We can utilize the hash function. So apply the hash function for each record. So each record will produce the hash key. So using that hash key, we can put 
together into the hash bucket with the same hash key. Then inside the hash bucket, we can sort the data. So we have how many? Four different join operations. Okay. I'm not going to explain details of the uh, how to implement the join operation, such as the hash function, but if you read the textbook and slide, you can understand such a thing. There are hybrid the hash join, but I will skip that part. Then also we have the set operation such as union, intersection, and difference. This one. I will skip the out of joint, the special case. Then next one is a heuristic way of the query optimizing. Somebody may be curious, do we need to use the do we need to, when we compute the cost, so in this case, we have 12,000 different cases. So as we discussed before, cost-based optimizer, CBO, will calculate all the costs. Case 1, 100. Case 2, 101. Case 3, 10,000 and up to the case 12,000 is the 10. Do we need to calculate all of them? It will take many, much, much longer time than you expect. Actually, when you submit the query, it will return the data very fast. So, is there any way to reduce the case? For example, obviously, this thing bridge first, first. Then New York, Boston is taking longer time. Then New York, Boston, uh, New York bridge port, then Boston, right? So we'd better visit New York or Boston first, not bridge port. But if you are in the bridge port, it will be a different story. So let's say you are in the Philadelphia, Paris. So this one will be first, then Bridgeport, then Boston. Obviously, you will not visit the bus, the Bridgeport. So we will not consider this one as the first. You can reduce the case, like the 6, 2, 2 case. It's the one third of this. 4,000. Huge difference, right? So, other thing is definitely using airplane will not be effective, right? Why? You need to go to the JFK and takes long time to take off, right? Then it will take just a couple of hours to the here, and also Bridgeport does not have an airport, so you can rule out obvious case. Yes. Yes, it does. How? No, the airport is the uh, Bridgeport Airport. Oh, which one? Yeah. Do you mean the Sikorsky? Yeah. yeah. It's a Stratford. No, that's a Bridgeport. Yeah. Ah, it's, a, it's a Bridgeport? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. however, Sikorsky Airport, does it have the commercial? Yes. So yes. To the New York? Uh -huh. Oh, I see. <laughs> but expensive. <laughs> Too expensive. For example, my budget is the thousand. Okay? Then you can rule out the obvious case, right? So it can be drastically reduced, reduced, right? Final case is, for example, 100. Out of the 12,100 is only less than 10%. So you can rule out the obvious case. That is the purpose of the heuristic optimization. So how can, do you have any idea for the heuristic optimization. Let's think about the, this one.
So question is the least the last name and first name of the employee whose department is bigger than five. No. D number <coughs> D name H. Okay? Last name and first name of employee whose department name is HR. Then, query is a select last name, first name from employee department where DNO is equal to D number and D name. I asked you to make the relational algebra, okay? So some of the students first join employee and department with the NO is the number. Then, measure one. Then, measure one. 